good look here. See what the other side does. Very deep, just around the front. I'm going to go through here if I could. Before we left, I had to come over to the Columbia River, dip in my toe, and then we'll head over to uh, the lookout and find where to go. Yet, we'll get down to the beach here and head down to the Peter Wreck of the Peter Iredell. Sun's in my eyes, beautiful bright day, but uh, time to get going on the Oregon Coast Trail. Join us on this long adventure. It'll be a lot of fun. We're heading south. Finally off the beach for a while. We gotta find a place to camp in here that's kind of out of the way. Don't want to make a big scene, but this is not too bad. We we're down here and ran into a lady, and she said a couple of places have trails off to the side here. So we'll see what we can find. Got off the beach on the side trails and finally in a little forest here where you're not on the beach and you're not 
where houses are going to be able to see on this off on this little side trail. So I think this will work for the night, despite there's ants here and you know a little bit of mist, but it's not bad um, compared to the beach, which is really really foggy. So we'll hunker down here, retrace our steps down to the beach tomorrow and then we'll head back to Gearheart and then over to Seaside and then we'll continue on and hope. Well good morning on day two. Today's gonna be a little bit more normal I think. Had a good night's sleep in a pretty quiet spot despite being bugged by two dogs last night. Heading up here a little ways on the road to get water and then we'll get down on the beach get through Gearheart and see how the morning goes pretty quiet today thought it was going to drizzle but looks like it's just going to clear up so that's okay about seven o'clock and people are always already starting to flock to the beach so it's a good day talk to you soon On the beach, yay. Wind in my face, the rain may be coming, so we'll see. Well, we've now reached the end of our beach for the day, and the area called the Cobbles. Get up here at Beach Access 11, and on the Seltzer Park, get some water and put on the trail. The fog and wet is back. The weatherman was spot on with his 40% chance of rain, which means 100% chance correct here. Awfully slippery, rooty trail up Humbug. I mean, Tillamook. Yeah, it reminds me of Humbug. Not quite as steep, but just as slippery when wet. So we'll see how it is once we really start going uphill. About 16 miles in and I'm just drippy and everything is uh, wet on the outside but good and warm on the inside not really that cold up here so feet are good little toe seems to be making a stand today so we'll have to check that out when I get in and wrap it for a while I'm not sure just no pressure on it. it's just needing attention I guess oh well we'll get to the camp now well it is quit raining we're drizzling, now it's just dripping. I think we're at the top of Tillamook Head. Starting to go downhill to the backpack camp, so that's good. Nice big trees up here. And opened up into the forest at the hilltop. It's just raining chicken of the woods here. This poor tree is attacked by Polyperus sulfurius. Not quite as big as the other one, but just as pretty. Wouldn't you know it, as soon as I crawled underneath that log, went down about four switchbacks, and then I wound up at this place. So I thought I missed it, because this seems a lot longer than what what the book says, but that's kind of always the way it is. At least the sun is out and the sky is blue, and I'm sitting and no longer slipping and sliding. That was like, oh my God. <laughs> Somebody like poured extra water on today and who ever put the clay mud at the top? That was like, thanks, you know? Oh well, 
got three little shelters here and the guys I saw at the bottom are here are doing a section trail um, and people are just kind of coming out looking at the view I guess we're about a mile and a half or so from the Cola parking lot so we'll do that tomorrow we'll get some dinner and stuff ourselves and have a nice shelter with no dogs and probably have a few mice tonight but that's okay been a good day so far only fell once slipped twice my ice skating skills are improving um, surprised I didn't see any salamanders today but the chicken of the woods fungus haven't seen that in a long time very special cool day day number two good morning on day three here heading down to the Indian beach parking lot from the backpackers camp on a relatively dry trail compared to yesterday's ending slog so we'll see how this goes it should be downhill for the next mile so it's okay must have been a small little spruce when they came through and logged here a hundred years ago Indian Beach and everybody out here surfing looks like they're having a pretty good time. The tide is in. Going out high tide was about half hour ago, so uh, find the alternate here, but the almost down here to the cars, so change and eat some breakfast and, and uh, relax a little bit. I'm on my way to Ecola Point. I must have missed a trail fork because I went the old way and that's pretty well washed out. But retracing steps, found some people coming back. <sighs> a little stressful. Didn't want to go that way. I'd go on the road before I did that. But I think we're on the right path now. This looks to be a much calmer place than Seaside. A lot of traffic up on Ecola Point Road though. This is another nice beautiful Oregon day. Well I got into rights for camping pretty early this afternoon about 3.30. Um, got cleaned up, did a little laundry, hopefully things are drying out. I went into town again and did a little shopping and just sightseeing and now I'm hunkered down by the library just finishing this off and then gonna use their internet connection here and get things published. Then I'll go back and make some dinner and have a quiet night in a nice little family run campground. Anyway, got a long day tomorrow so gotta rest up. Have a good night. We'll see you all tomorrow. Well, good morning. Beautiful blue day out here in Cannon Beach. I uh, have a long day ahead. It's still pretty early. Haystack Rock behind me. And Tillamook Head way down there. We're going to go this way. Rights for camping was a nice spot last night. Cars were a little noisy on the road, but got a pretty good night's sleep and doing okay today. Well, the tide gods have been good. We made it around Silver Point. And next I gotta find the access off the beach. Not gonna make it around Hug Point though. It's already underwater. But beautiful day. Sun's not quite up over the mountains yet. Birds are happy and I see more dogs out here. Pulling their people. Lady riding her bike with her dog towing behind. Somebody in a baby jogger with their old dog in it. Uh, they're spoiled in Canada. But happy. 
see what's up ahead. up and we're still going uphill well the last eight miles or so through Oswald West State Park and and up to here <laughs> I feel like I'm on a hamster on a, on a wheel on a slight incline just goes and goes and goes and the downhill is just full of roots and slippery so you can't really make up any time I get over to the Neocani Mountain and I find a big do not enter trail closed sign so that doesn't really break my heart but I kind of wanted to see the view but we're not too far out of Manzanita I think I'll just hump it into there so oh man it's still a long day but we're getting there a little quicker now it's cut out about three and a half miles right here so Whew. might be time to find some ice cream Kind of a hot day here. Yay. Rest a little. So this was not in the literature or anything I found online. But there's been some blowdowns, so I imagine that's part of it. They're logging up on the other side, so who knows, but I'll okay. And we're around the corner, maybe this road will stop going uphill. It's gotta go down to the ocean sometime. It's just to walk in on the beach. We'll see. That's Manzanita, the Halem Bay, body of water over there. Way down there is where we gotta go tomorrow. Let's keep a look out of Garibaldi's numbers. Let's keep a look out of it. Way down there is where it's gonna see. Well, I've successfully made it to Manzanita. Still a beautiful day, kind of warm. I uh, pulled in here to the grocery store, got all set up for uh, dinner, and tomorrow, contacted my ride for tomorrow across the bay, and trying to get from Rockaway Beach to Garibaldi on the train. So, should be a little bit different day than a little bit of road walking today. My feet are good, despite all the uh, miles, but uh, we're going to get out of here and go down the road about a mile and a half find the Halen Bay State Park and get things organized a little earlier than I'd planned, but that's okay. That's what trail closures do. But a good day. Better now that I've had ice cream. Good morning on this beautiful day five of my journey here down the Oregon coast. Today we're headed towards Garibaldi. The Halem Bay is over that ridge. And we got about a two mile walk down on the beach to get to the end of this 
fit, go over to the other side, make a phone call, and get my ferry ride to the other side, and then book it down to Rockaway Beach. Or hopefully I can get a train ride down to Garibaldi. It isn't very far, but it's just very fun. Well, I see a jetty ahead. We're definitely running out of beach. So I gotta find a way off the beach over to the pickup spot. Okay, this looks promising. Had to go all the way down the beach then you get into the driftwood. And then look for this tall sign that has hikers and a horse. Well, coming down the rock wall to the beach was a little iffy through the scotch broom and blackberries, so. But I think we're here. I see the yellow little house up here, boats, and a post on the beach down there where they pick people up, and a whole bunch of pelicans. Yay. a good day so tomorrow uh, I secured my boat ride down in the marina at nine o'clock to go across to Bay Ocean Spit. Uh, Tillamook Bay is a lot bigger body of water than what I went over today so that'll be interesting and uh, cuts off a little bit of miles for tomorrow so tomorrow is only about to be at a 10 mile slog so and that should be okay we'll wind up at a state park so be good but hopefully get a good night's sleep tonight and uh, be raring to go in the morning. Well, good morning. On day six, I'm at the uh, port of Garibaldi here waiting for my boat. It'll be about a half an hour or so to go over to the Bay Ocean Spit and uh, start walking south. Anyway, cold last night. First fall night, I can really say, okay, fall is here. Pretty cold in the low 40s, so did okay. But uh, ready to go. Got to get across uh, Hill McVay though. Seems a little more low key today. Oh, my ride. 
ride. Now I am heading south, I guess. There's eight mirrors down that way. We're gonna get around all this mess about five miles. I'm walking south on the Bay Ocean Peninsula. Beautiful place though. Nice and quiet. Every now and then there's a side trail that probably goes over to the beach. We're gonna stay on this side because lots of cool birds over here. Well, there's our first real look at Cape Mears. Beautiful calm day still. The wind machine has not kicked on yet, so just about perfect, about 65 degrees and level and hard packed road, so that sounds pretty good to me. We'll be doing this for at least another hour and a half. So this will be all right. Nice day. We're in Cape Mears now and apparently the road's closed and they don't want people up there. So I ran into a local and he set me up another trail that the community has built. So we'll try this and see if I wind up at Cape Mears Lighthouse or not. <laughs> Adventure of the day. It looks like I have made it back to the main road with heads up to the lighthouse. Or at least Cape Mears loop. Yay. Didn't really want to get lost at lunchtime. That's upsetting. All right, let's see where this goes to the right. Well, I'm no longer lost. I now know where I am. I'm on Lighthouse Road. Coming up to the lighthouse. Yay. We can't see the road is very good up to Cape Mears, but the scenery is beautiful. These trees are huge. Beautiful blue day too. Lots of birds up here. They're all hiding, but I hear them. This is called the octopus tree. Very interesting. Definitely eight little branches coming off. Pretty cool little tree. Actually, it's a pretty big tree. We all made it to Oceanside. Had to stop and get a snack. Kind of tired. 14 miles in, got a ways to go still, so I need to fuel up. Let's see what we got. Now I'm at the crest of one of a thousand little crests today. About ready to go into the little now town of Neatarts. And I guess Neatarts Bay and Neatarts Spit. I'm glad I'm up here. I'm not sure how deep that is down there, but it looks a little bit. Unfortunately, at the end of Neatart Spit, it's just water. There's no boat to get across to those mountains in the background, which is Cape Lookout. And somewhere down there at the end of all this water is Cape Lookout State Park. So we're gonna go around Neatarts, around this whole body of water to get where we're gonna to camp tonight. And we're probably gonna roll in about dark. But cheeseburger's holding strong, so we should be okay. All right, last city of the night, Neatarts. Seems like a candy or a breakfast pastry, but that's okay. Got to consult the map up here and see if we're coming up. Happy Camp Road or going down. This road just seems to roll. I used to have fun building it. There's like about 150 seals over there. I haven't seen this many seals in one spot. Day. Seems to be a whole pelican party out here. They're just fishing's not as good on this side of the road, I guess. Just as pretty in its own way, though. Well, day seven, good morning from Cape Lookout State Park. A 
it feels like it's going to be warm today. The ranger informed me that the north trail up Cape Lookout is closed, so I'm having to backtrack a ways to the entrance and then head up the main road to the trailhead to that goes out to the tip of the Cape, which we're not going to do. But we'll go down that trail a little way and take the south trail down to the beach. There it should be a little bit better. And then go down to Sand Lake and see if we have to cross it or walk around it, which could be an extra six and a half miles today. Well, this is Anderson's Lookout. We're looking north here over Neetart's Spit and in the distance is Cape Mears. Okay, we've made it to the Cape Lookout Trailhead. We're not going to go out and back though. We're going to come up here and sit for a little bit and then find the trail down. All right, so we've got about a mile point eight of the South Trail getting down to the beach here. A little muddy, a little rooty, but not that steep. So legs are a little tired from yesterday. The downhill isn't helping, but it's better than going uphill in the heat. So we'll just get down here safely. Well, we finally made it to the beach. Pretty warm down here too. We are getting close to uh, Sand Lake place I've been kind of worried about for a while but according to a couple of maps I've looked at the water's not coming over the breach and I might just have a straight shot into Cape Kowanda. A little hump of sand to get over to Cape Kowanda but that's okay. At least that takes out about 6.2 miles of walking. We'll know in about 10 minutes whether we have to do that or not. Well, we are now at the mouth of Sand Lake. It looks like there is some water here. Well, I thought I was going to catch a break. I've tried a couple of places and it's just flowing too quickly. It's deeper than thigh deep and the sand is pretty shifty on the bottom, so I'm not going to wait any longer. Low tide's at 7.30 and... and uh, could be somewhere propping my feet up by then so I'm a little disappointed I can't get across here I can see Cape Kowanda uh, don't really want to have to walk around but I guess that's how it is so uh, rivers well after wandering around the sand for what seemed like endless hours I finally wound up at uh, Sand Beach Campground, close to Sand Lake. Talk to the camp host. Apparently there's a free hiker biker spot here. So I'm gonna stay here tonight. Tomorrow at low tide in the morning, cross over to Wayland Island, and then walk into Cape Hawanda and Pacific City, and then carry on from there. We'll camp here tonight, save some money, and go into town and uh, party like it's 1984 tomorrow. I'm gonna get some sleep tonight though. I'm pretty tired, need some rest. Have a good night, day seven. Good morning, on day eight, I had to turn the wind machine off because somebody turned it up last night about nine o'clock. It was blowing about 30 to 40 miles an hour all night and I just, I didn't sleep very well. I got up this morning. This is where the uh, caretaker said to maybe try and cross this morning. I went out here, it was too mucky and marshy and just decided, no, I'm not gonna tr chance it. And just decided to hike on the road over around into uh, Pacific City, which is gonna take a little while, but it's the safe thing to do. And uh, still a little windy warm there must be a fire somewhere and the sun is orange and the sky doesn't look great the air isn't clear and we'll just get there it'll take a while
morning seems to have cleared, but it was sure an irritant to the eyes up by Sand Lake into the lungs. But the further south we went, the better the air got. So hopefully that will get put out. Folks will have a safe day. It's not a lot of property. Yeah. Unlike Sunset Beach, it's now Ray Beach to the north. You get to park in between the two yellow signs here. That is it. Nice idea. Good morning on day nine. What a difference a good night's sleep makes. We got a little bit of a task ahead of us today from Lincoln City on the beach south to the top of Silence Bay, the Taft, and then a road walk around to Glen Eden Beach, and then roads and trails and beach to. Depot Bay, and then eventually we're going to wind up at Beverly Beach State Park, which is north of Newport. But most of the same this morning, so we'll get started again getting out of town. And once we get past Silence Bay down in Glen Eden Beach, getting down to the whale watching part of the Oregon now. Let's see what we can find today. Nice and cool here, foggy and pretty quiet though. Lincoln City is kind of the incorporation of all of these neighborhoods and uh, didn't happen that long ago. But it's a bustling, big, busy place. Well, we're back on the beach again, heading down to the southern end of Lincoln City to a neighborhood called Taft. And then we'll probably walk around Silence Bay very pretty part of the world, but uh, just add a little bit more enjoyment to the day. I'll eat lunch and half. Right, we are at Spanish Head, almost half Spanish Head Resort. Let's Silence Bay over there. We gotta walk over on that side. This is the tip of the Salishan Spit right across. south end of Silence Bay. We came from that little point way up there. And it did. It's always an adventure trying to find the hiker biker camp. My get up and go has got up and went, so I hope it's not far. It seems pretty calm down here on the beach. About four o'clock last night, a tree fell about 50 yards away from where I was sleeping into the forest fortunately woke up everybody around us but I guess that happens the tree falls in the woods you do hear it so down here and get off the beach with the 
tide's going to be a little too high to get around this point, but and then we'll get up to the lighthouse. Which I can see from here, it's, it's kind of barely visible through the mist. Okay, I'm off the beach at Schooner Point and I'm headed up to Lighthouse Road. First look south towards Cape Perpetua and this large little bit of water down here. Check that out. Figure out how to get across that. But welcome to Newport. Well, it was lunchtime, so I found a buffet in uh, Newport. Good choice. I may stay here for dinner. But the beach is nice. Get down here and go walk downtown and see what's going on. But it may take a while to finish all this. Get around the corner here and find the other lighthouse. You see the river and further south. Cloaked behind trees is the Newport Yakina Bay Lighthouse. Looks like we're doing a little bridge maintenance here. It's kind of comforting to have this four foot high rail off to the side. Pretty bridge. So McCulloch designed it though. It's got his Art Deco flavor to it. and this is the jetty road and I think I'm taking the trail into the park but hopefully it's over there where those trees are. Oh, welcome to South Beach State Park. I have no idea which part of the park we're in but now we got to figure out where to go. Some interesting hiker biker camp. Everybody's in a corral. This is my corral for the night. It'll be two. Well, all in all, after 10 days, I am definitely feeling it, but not totally ready to quit yet. So tomorrow I'll get up and pack up and probably get picked up about 11 and go do some things and be back in a couple of days here and start again. Good morning or afternoon as it may be on day 11 taking a zero today and going out to the entrance gate here to meet my friends. We're gonna go out to lunch. I'll go home for a little while, do laundry, pick up a few things, attend a meeting or two, and get back at it and come back here to the same place before I continue down to the rest of, to the, rest of the coast. And it's time to go get some food and relax a little bit. There they are. Alright. Let's see what we're going to do here. Have a good Put stuff all the way in the back. Oh. Yeah. I'll put it in the back so you can make it. Well, good morning. A rested morning on Day 13 here, just leaving to go catch my bus up to Coos Bay and see what, uh, see how long it takes us to get back up to Newport. So we got back to the state park about 2.30 and took about three hours to get down to the next one. So figure I'd cut off that distance tomorrow make life a little easier. Just 
with a flat beach walk for a while. So we'll get down here with the surfers and head south. Breaks over. Well, we just kept walking and walking and eventually get past Seal Rock and check the uh, route and took us down Quail Point down to the beach. I was going to stay in a couple of different places, but it just didn't work out. So when I got to Seal Rock, I was going to go down the beach there and then I checked my uh, directions book and it said to go down about another mile or so and go down Quail Road which dumped me out on a better beach and uh, so here I am and I'll just stay here a little bit in the morning and get up and go and we're a little closer to everything probably about seven miles away is the next park hopefully and run into the store tomorrow and it's a warm night and the moon's out and the ocean's calm so I'm just gonna take it easy here and Get ready for the uh, next 10 days, starting tomorrow. Yay, round two. Well, good morning. Day 14 getting started again here in the second part here of our trip from just south of seal rock a little more rested and uh, ready to go so let's do this i'm going to take the beach access 66 off ramp up here at lost creek get on the road and need some coffee Sea Bay empties out over there in the Pacific. Well, I found my place to eat. They won't be open for another 30 minutes, so I'm going to go up here and check a few things out, get a few things at the little quick mart for the night, and then I'll be ready to roll. Ooh, well, lunch is done. I'm dropping down here on this little outlet here, the Keedy Wayside, to get around the corner and then we'll head down to the state park. All right, we are here. We just gotta find out where to go. All right. This looks cute and cozy and pretty simple. That's okay. I like simple. Whew. Well, today was a good day. Got out about 9 o'clock and got in about 2.30 and got things all set up around me, drying out from this morning and trying to get the wet sand off. So I'm going to go down and take a shower and get cleaned up and relax and Try and regroup today. Tomorrow's kind of a busy day. We got to go down to Yahats and get a few things, and then head up a couple of trails, including the Amanda Trail, which is a uh, kind of a special trail. And hopefully, come out at uh, the campground and get a spot um, at the Cape Perpetual Campground. Day 14. They're flying by. Happy day 15, heading south on the beach towards Yahats. 
We'll be there in a couple hours. Nice wide beach still. Had a pretty good night. Had a pretty good night's sleep. And not achy today and life is good. So we'll get down here and do a little beach walking, a little road walking, and then get on the trails and see what is happening down up on Cape Perpetua. I'm not sure which one of these points here we have to get up on and get to the 804 trail, but we'll uh, find it. We're about out of beach. And I'm guessing the 804 trail starts up at the top of this staircase up here. And I don't see a number 74 anywhere yet. Okay, officially we're on the 804 trail, which goes around for a little while and dumps us out at Smelt Sands Recreation Area. Nice little view. This place is pretty incredible here. Short little trail it offers. Well, I think we're off the 804 trail, but we're just zigging down this way. Directions aren't real clear, but we to keep the water on the right. A lot of interesting fences up here. Well, we've zigged our way off the trail, but looks like there's another little trail over here. We'll go this way. See where this goes. We made it to downtown Yahut, went to the store, got a little food, a little snack for lunch, and then we'll get rolling again. Yay. Let's see how their pulled pork is here. Well, after the grotto, just kind of had a quiet walk up and down and came out here in the campground area, Cape Perpetua, and wandered around. It looked pretty full. The sign said it was full. And eventually, Mr. Campground Manager came up and I asked boldly if they had any hiker biker spots and they said yes in site one there's a car park there but you can camp there for ten dollars so you know that's the number 
nuns. Oddest thing, seeing nuns on the trail and, and their habit and everything. Anyway, but uh, so we're here and uh, gonna get uh, a little snack and might even take a nap. Because looks like it's gonna rain, so what better way to spend a rainy afternoon than taking a nap? Before I made dinner, I'd head to the end of the campground and see if we can't find this giant spruce that's supposedly up here. Not sure how far it is, but that's all right. He had a rest. We're good for a couple of miles. We'll see. Well, that's a pretty big spruce there, but... That's not the tallest. Well, there's a little bench over here. Oh my God. That's a pretty good sized spruce tree. There's a little hole in it. You can't drive through it, but you can crawl through it. Man, a whole bunch of leather ferns up there. and It's just one big ass tree. Cool. And a hobbit hole. From here, got a little bit of a road walk tomorrow once we get off the first little trail get up to Washburn State Park. Part of it's on the beach, but we'll see. It'll be about a 10 mile hump up there. And then we'll get into town on Monday. Too bad they wouldn't let me camp up here. This is a nice spot. I like it. It's very peaceful. Peaceful is good. But this whole place is pretty mellow, despite a few noisy dogs, but that's okay. You can put up with them. They're people. People are nice here. Well, good morning. Day 16 here, leaving Cape Perpetual Campground. Gotta pay attention here, usually start my day walking on the beach but today we get out to the visitor center and then on a little trail for about a mile and then it's up the road most of today until we get to Carl Washburn State Park and uh, today's halfway mark days wise anyway so day 32 I plan on being home God willing so anyway Every step is another step closer, so we're getting there. See what adventures today brings. Well, this isn't right. This is the upper parking lot. I remember doing a run here about 30 years ago, and we're going to go on the Rudius Trail now on the entire coast, I think. we got to get down this road. All right, apparently now we're on the right spot. About a mile of this and then we'll get on the road. Looks like a little more surf today. So I just checked directions here. We've got about a seven mile road walk to get to Carl Washburn Park. None of it's on the beach. So this is a little sketchy road to walk on, but So well, this is my day today, a lot of this. Uh, 
Well, we've been on the road for about two hours now. Somebody seemed to put down a mile mark. A trail marker. Well, it's a little narrow here. At least the end will come quickly. Well, we're about a quarter of a mile away from Rock Creek Campground that is closed, so this fine little spot, the ocean beach picnic area. I don't think I'm going to go down the road. I think I'm going to eat right here, have a nice lunch. It's like gummy bears, crackers, a granola bar, and some sort of deli thing I got at the store the other day for 79 cents. So. Hopefully I won't get too many poisoning from that. Anyway, got about a mile and a half to go from here, but time to eat. Okay. All right, we are here. Well, we just have to register and find our spot and get set up and relax. It looks like rain, but it looked like this yesterday and it never did, but word from down south it was raining down there so we'll get set up and get ready for it good morning on day 17, getting down to the beach here, where we head up to Hesita Head and Hesita Head Lighthouse before heading into Florence today. Still don't know where we're gonna stay tonight. We'll figure that out later. So, beautiful day, cloudy. Did not sleep well last night, so let's see how the day goes. I'm gonna go up the road a little ways here and or up the beach and eat breakfast, probably at the lighthouse. Get going a little earlier this morning on the beach before eight, so uh, we should make some ground up today. Still, great day to be alive. Well, I hope the Hobbit Trail is up here somewhere before this headland, because the tide is high and that could be a little wet going that way, so. I'm thinking it's up here. I don't see number 93 yet, so we're still looking. Narrow little section here. So they call it the Hobbit Trail. Pretty cool little walk. Either a nice artwork or a bad day for a lot of crabs. Seat ahead. I'm sure, a lot of stairs on this trail. Big old tree here. No two trees. All right, this is looking north. It's Cape Perpetua that's sticking out way up there. And we came from about halfway down there, the sandy parts. Now we're up on a seat ahead. As I started looking around, all of a sudden, my right foot went out from under me. I fell, hit my left shoulder, dislocated my left thumb, had to come up, get things fixed, and then go down and get ready for breakfast and the rest of the day. I was okay. All right, the Hasita Head Lighthouse with functioning lens down there and have a little look. First look south, but we 
can't see the beach, but we get around that little point up there where the sea lion caves are. But this is kind of a nice little structure here. Doesn't look like anybody's here. This is the lighthouse keeper's old house. Now it is used as an Airbnb. I'm not sure if it was built in 1893 along with the lighthouse, but pretty nice little, little place. Next test is I need to find somebody to drive me through the tunnel. So I need to go down to the beach and start asking people. I've through this a couple of times and always wondered, well, you know, all the literature I have says, well, try and get a ride through the tunnel because it's two day three in the state record. Yeah, there's says, nowhere to walk. There's nowhere to walk here. So this is huh? greatly appreciated. Life saving. Well, can we take you up to the viewpoint? Sure. Okay. As far south as you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. We spent last night in Florence. Ooh. All right, this is our first view south. All the beach walking we've got to deal with today. We are back in the land of Gorse. Didn't know it had reached this far north. Noxious little weed. Beach adventure. Yeah. Avoid the blue vegetation. Florence, a little leg weary, but we'll uh, get down here and find a place to park. We've got to do a little shopping tonight and uh, bed down. Phone's about out of battery, so we need to find a place to get battery called around. None of the places that I wanted to stay were accommodating with electricity, so who knows? Let me just stay in town tonight. Find a cheap spot. So, figure it out, but day 17 is a good day. Pretty views this morning. A lot of beach walking down to Florence, so that's okay. It's all what we do out here. Be on the beach the next couple of days, so we'll see how that goes. So have a good night. Got to get a few things done. Go rest. That's what I'm going to do. Well, good morning. Day 18, Florence, Oregon. We're uh, almost to the Sayusala Bridge. A little bouncy when trucks go over it. Not too bad. Good when they have rain up here, then you can just look down and see your death in the water below. Although you might survive this fall, I think we're only about 50 feet up, so nice and peaceful over that way. We're heading over the dunes out to the ocean here pretty quick. Well, we've made the turn on the jetty road, and as you can see, it's going to be a lot uh, quieter down here in a little bit. If this was not scotch broom and was sagebrush, this area would kind of remind me of Bend. I got a nasty feeling that this little signpost up here is going to make me go left and go right up through that saddle of sand up there onto the beach. Looks like I was right. It's a 
Looks like the morning Stairmaster routine. Well, an hour and a half of that, uh, found the perfect lunch log, so I have to take advantage of that. Still got about 90 more minutes before I get down to the first campground and crossing and fill up with water and get ready to head south. Need to call the uh, marina and try to arrange the boat right. Do that right now. Well, we got under two miles to go to get the Driftwood Campground and Silk Goose River or Creek. Hopefully it's up here around the corner. Three hours on the beach topped off with straight up sand dune. Lovely. But I might find a bridge across the river. So that might save a little bit of time. Waitable, yeah, my ass. It's a swimmable. Anyway, that we went out of our way and went over the bridge. That would have been a disappointment down on the beach. Oh well, let's get some water and snack and keep going. Well, we had to go up and around the Silk Coos River. Went through Wax Myrtlewood Campground, which is very nice. I might have to come back and just stay there. But way steep? Oh man, I don't think so. Bring your floaties, especially in June. Anyway, we're gonna head down to Talkinitch Creek and get set up before dark. I think it's about two hours to get there. It's about four miles from here, maybe five, maybe six. Who knows? Anyway. I did not get a call back from Winchester Bay Marina, so I guess tomorrow we're going out Sparrow Park Road the long way around. So we'll just make the best of it. At least we're going to Winchester Bay and not farther tomorrow, so it shouldn't be more than about 15 miles. So that's okay. We'll just go down and enjoy this and see if we get rained on. Yay. different than beach walking. I think we'll go over here by the oxbow of the river and see if we can find a spot before we go camp in the middle of all that. We'll look around up here. Well, I think we'll stay up here close to the trail but we'll be up and out early. Enjoy the night. Not sure I'll make it over to the beach for the sunset. It's about, we're about four tenths of a mile away, but that's okay. Good day. Forgot what day it is, day 18. Ah, oh, kind of a long day, but just a lot of walking on the beach. Calm here at least. Saw more deer today and the seal was kind of cool. I'm sorry it scared him, but uh, I hope he's doing okay. Hope he's doing better. And relax. Have a good night. Maybe talk to you soon.
Oh, well, good morning. On this drippy day 19, starting to drip a little bit. Camping up on the Takaniche Creek Trail, about a quarter to a four tenths of a mile up. Yesterday, I looked around and decided, well, since I'm not getting a boat ride, I'm just gonna take the Takaniche Creek Trail out to the road, get on Highway 101 like I would anyway, and skip Sparrow Park Road, because the last time I was down there, it was pretty sketchy. You can wade through most of the potholes on that road. I wouldn't take your car on it. This seems a little more peaceful way to go. Plus I'll be off the sand in about a mile. And this is a very pleasant part of the woods. Slept okay last night, nice and quiet. And so, day 19, we'll get down to Gardner and then Reedsport and Winchester Bay. Now I think I'm on a little more dirt trail. So that should go a little quicker than walking on sand dunes. Well, it's after September 15th now, but we still need to be careful of the little snowy clovers. I'm just kind of looking at this little station at the top of the ridge. I see a trail that way and then over that way. And so I think the level is just about done here. Well, welcome back to the Oregon Dunes. It's about ready to get interesting. It'd be nice if that was the way. That little post way up there is the trail markers. Just like that, we're back to civilization. Let's just see exactly where we are though. <laughs> Go out here and have a little peek. The dunes overlook. Yeah, that's good. Well, that kind of puts our day in perspective here. We're at Takanich Creek Trailhead. And gotta go down the Gardener, and then Reedsport, and then Winchester Bay, and down to the Umpqua Lighthouse State Park tonight. Yay. But while we're here, next to Highway 101, we might as well tank upon water and get some, fun, get some breakfast. Well, breakfast is nothing fancy. You know, you can have instant oatmeal cold. It's not bad. It's just cold. Plenty of water here and then we'll keep going. Also, fruit slices. Very important. In the morning drizzle has stopped and it's not windy. It's not really warm, but the long road walk in the gardener has begun. Piggy. Squirrel across the road. I call, call all squirrels chiggy. One name for all of them. It works. Anyway, so we're back to Highway 101 and continue on our journey south. Now well, we're finally headed down the hill in the gardener. A couple hours later, finally back on trail and welcome to Gardner, Oregon. So that's about it. Well we finally made it to the Umqua River. Not crossing by boat today but by foot. Except for the car noise, this is a pretty mellow little bridge. We'll just enjoy the peace and quiet. We're going to cross the bigger portion of the Umpqua River here. It goes down to 
Winchester Bay actually before it goes out in the ocean. The leaves up here remind me it's the first day of autumn, September 21st. So, happy fall, everybody. Okay, we finally made it to Reedsport. Gotta find some more lunch. And then we'll head on over to Winchester Bay, which is about four miles down the road. Some of the simplest and nicest people live here. But most importantly is what they live next to. Best Mexican restaurant. All of the Oregon coast. Fast service, good food. And more important than that, there's this little taco stand over here that's been here forever. Go over there and get dinner. Well, that just breaks my heart, but trust me, we'll come back here again at Gus's. He's got the best stuff. One day of the week he's closed. But we'll go back to the restaurant. Good morning on day 20 the hiker biker camp at Umpqua Lighthouse State Park has taken us down to the nearby Lake Marie Trail and I'm going to follow this out to the Lighthouse Road and go up and over that before we go down to the beach. Today's going to be a, a long walk south on the beach and I'm not sure about 10 Mile Creek, but we'll see how it is today. I've known people who have gotten across that at high tide, so. So we have the mouth of the Umpqua River and all this Oregon dunes to go play in. Well, I have made it down to the river and looks like lots of people out there. Well, off in the distance, we can finally see Cape Arago way down there. We'll be up on top of that in a couple of days, heading south to Bandon. So we're making progress. A great time for all these sandlings up here. Don't stand around very much. We're not quite to 10 Mile Creek yet, but we're getting there. But we're at the lunchtime log. So today's lunch consists of pink salmon, some kind of fruit snack, and peanuts, and water. Nice day though, the sun has finally come out. The sand is not really firm yet. It's kind of squishy, so it's kind of wearing me out. But still got a ways to go. I meet though. Large amounts of pelicans up here. Let's see what this is. This looks a little deeper than it first came on. But... Alright, this is doable. This is maybe two feet deep. We'll just go get into some different shoes and go for it. At least it's not flowing very fast. Really not that deep. And we just gotta take our time and not get in a hurry. The bottom actually feels pretty good. Must have knew I was coming. This is the perfect changing log. I gotta get my stuff in. Just glad that 10 Mile Creek was not a big to-do. It wasn't a big to-do last time I went over it, so definitely deeper now, but Glad we weren't here at high tide. That would not have been 
possible. So, live and learn. Beautiful day though. Good morning on this foggy day 21. Three weeks in, hard to believe. Man, this time next week we'll be in definitely Southern Oregon, getting our way past Gold Beach. But today, it's a little easier day. We gotta get out this road, get on the million dollar highway, and get over the McCulloch Bridge into North Bend by lunchtime. Uh, my friends are gonna meet me for lunch. Jackie's gonna pick me up and Pete and Frank will meet us at Walt's Tavern, which will take as much time as possible to eat lunch and drink beer. And then I've gotta go to the running store and replaced my hat that escaped me in Gardner of all places I think I don't know anyway you lose things on this trip just you leave them or you lose them or they take them or the birds get them or the squirrels eat them I don't know but you lose things anyway some things you can do without with the amount of beach walking coming up bigger hat would be good so after that we'll do a little shopping and then wind up tonight skipping most of the roads in Coos Bay North Bend and Empire and go straight out to Sunset Bay get a good night's rest and get ready for a 20 mile hump tomorrow and abandon to Bullard's Beach State Park but it's quiet out here, nobody's out here right now. So we'll get out to the road and get into town and then get back out in the woods again. Not too bad for Friday. The bridge is a mile long built by Condi McAuliffe and designed and built beginning in eight, no, 1936, not that old. Um, and we'll talk more about that when we get up there. A little espresso place in case you need to get a little jolt before you go over the bridge here. About ready to get a lot narrower and a lot noisier. And we'll get a lot taller up here. Up Memorial Bridge. Here we come. You would think all things could pass underneath this bridge, but I believe in 1986 a Swedish schooner hit the bottom of it with its top mast. Caused a little bit of damage to the bridge, not to mention the boat. But it's all been fixed. We're not even to the high part yet. All right, we are now at the middle of this bouncy bridge and halfway across. Lots of fishermen out today. Beautiful calm day though. No wind up here to speak of. gentleman's name I was talking to there was named Brett he's from Washington DC he's been out five or six days that's the first person I've met that's actually doing this trail I'm at the North Bend Public Library now and waiting for my friend Jackie and mom to show up but first I'm gonna get out of some of these stinky clothes so they don't kick me out of the car
Well, day 21 was pretty good. Short walk, good company all afternoon. Had a little downtime this afternoon. Took a little walk after uh, I got organized out to the beach. And getting ready for tomorrow. Go back and uh, probably get some tea together tonight. And get up early in the morning and, and get on it. Hopefully get to uh, Bullard's Beach before it gets too dark. Last time I was there, an hour after it got dark. Hopefully I can get there by seven in the morning. So it's a ways, but it's all right. Calculated up, we're about 245 miles in and we're getting there. Not a bad day. Weather turned out to be perfect. And it's good seeing some friends today, having some good food. And now I need some good sleep. Rest this body and get it ready to go 20 plus tomorrow. Have a good night. See you on day 22. Well, good morning on day 22. A long day. We're heading past the Sunset Bay golf course. Gonna skip around the golf this morning. A good day for hiking. Sun goes down about 7.15, so hopefully we're in Bullards by then. Now this is about as close as we're gonna get to the Coos Head Lighthouse, but it's kind of perched way over there on its own. Well, we're just gonna take a slight scenic tour here. Go down and see if the gardens are up. What's left of the summer flowers. It's still a pretty garden. Mr. Simpson had a Simpson lumber made for his family. Different kind of ferns here than we've seen on our trip. Some of the same ones. This wild blue ball over here. Papyrus. Very serene. Just a calm day down here on Simpson Beach. Our trail goes back up to the road. The elevation that's just to get to the Cape Arago Trail. We're not going to pick the flowers. Just when you were tired of going uphill and decide to turn right, you come up on this. So up on top you can kind of see us several different rooms and the actual lookout parts are up here above ground level. But the trees are kind of blocking the view, so probably was a better view back in 1942. Okay, we are just about at the top of the ridge here with the leftover lumber and timber stuff and heading now south towards the junction of Seven Devils Road and Cape Arago. Well, that's a good sign. There's a road, which means up here ought to be a gate somewhere pretty close. Well, we're over the camel humps finally, almost back to a paved road. We got about a mile to go before we get to where we're going. Cool day though, that's really helped. Well, we're coming in the view of Seven Devils Wayside State Park. Doesn't look like a real happening place today, but that's where we're going. That's where we were this morning on that top part up there, Cape Arago. And the five mile point is a little again sticking out down there by those rocks out in the ocean. Well, I think we can get through this even if it's a little bit wet. Sand 
here, we're doing all right. It's Cape Blanco. See way down there. Not playing golf into a headwind's got to be tough. I guess they're getting all their money's worth today up there. Tough job for the caddies. Know that. Pearl's Trail. So we need to go over that ridge of trees to get to the campground. Alright, I think we're done going up. I think we're finally here. So we're going to go get checked in and see if Brett that I met yesterday is here. He's supposed to be here tonight. A happy day 23 at Bullards Beach State Park. Just leaving Bullards, heading toward the Coquille River and then into Bandon. Uh, we're coming up on the Coquille River Bridge, which some say is the most dangerous bridge to cross in all of the coast of Oregon. So sidewalk is not real big and it doesn't really have any guardrails so you know probably won't kill you but about 50 or 60 feet down got to be careful okay that's an osprey nest perched on those poles up there all right let the fun begin uh, this is maybe two feet rail maybe 18 inches of sidewalk maybe when you get over to the part of the bridge that lifts up to let boats through then you run into these barriers and then your sidewalk gets cut in half say goodbye to bullards and the coquille river and head into town Yeah, we're going to head down Riverside Drive, which is vastly a more dangerous place to walk uh, than Highway 101. The DLM built this overlook. We'll go out here and have a little look. You can't hunt from here, but you can see right now that the tide is out, the mud flats, the birds are out getting breakfast. We're headed over that way. These large Monterey cypress, as I mentioned, are the only trees that survived the abandoned fire. They're really not native. I'm not sure where they come from. All right, we finally reached Geiger Creek, the outlet, which goes into the Coquille River. You can go by the Bow Basin. Okay, we've turned down Jetty Road. Have the lighthouse over there. And the south jetty up here, the mouth of the Coquille River. Back down to the beach here at Face Rock Viewpoint. 
We'll head south down to China Creek. We'll go through a few creeks now. Go over China Creek one more time. It's pretty solid. Yep, good. Well, we made it off the beach and to Beach Loop Road. Okay, Birdie's Market is open and I've got ice cream and some Pepsi, so I'm good for an hour. That's all it takes. Well, I'm going to sign off here for 13 miles south, south of Andanel, but time to go. Tomorrow's the day off. We'll see what happens. Thanks for coming with us. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Well, good morning on this day 25. I am down at New River and it's not quite sunrise yet. And it's not quite low tide yet, but it's close enough that I tried getting across New River. Came down early just to try it out and it's five feet deep right here. And there's just no way. I mean, the bottom's okay, but uh, disappointing. I'm just gonna head back and uh, head down to Langlois and go into uh, the park on the road, I guess. Not happening here today. Uh, end of September, who would have thought? Usually this is not this high. I've never seen it this high. Oh well. Time to be safe anyway. Well, this morning's turning out to be a little better. It quit drizzling. The sun is trying to come out. And we have just entered our final county, Curry County, leaving Coos County. We we're about a mile and a half out of Langlois. You know what that means? We're gonna stop and get at least one hot dog. But more than that, I think I need a cup of coffee this morning. Well, welcome to Langlois. Miss the live music. Cheese factory tonight on a Tuesday night. Go we'll figure. These people got to do something on a Tuesday night. Wednesday night's church. Langlois Market full of hot dogs and coffee and go through town and get on Forest Lake Loop. It's all that disease, but actually that's a red algae that lives on the bark. The only red algae that lives outside the ocean. First county park that I've been at on my trip. So we'll go find the park host and check them. All right, I've met the camp host, Megan. I have a free spot tonight. I'm gonna set up over here, which is really flat. A little breezy here, but kind of under the trees. Anyway, time to get organized. We are finally here. I need to take a rest. I only had about six hours of sleep in the last two days, so feeling a little run down. Need a nap. <sighs> well, the camp host just brought me some chicken stew and a biscuit, so. Sun's coming out. It's doing a lot better than it started. Whew. Well, good morning on day 26. You can see I'm still at uh, Boys Co. Park, but I've been up for a while contemplating. Got up real early this morning and pouring rain and decided, you know, I'm just going to wait a little bit. So waited for the rain to quit. 
I'll go down for the evening tide, which will give me a little more rest this morning and head out of here about one o'clock. And if I get down to the river at six and cross it, great. If not, I'm down there and I can camp down there and tomorrow I can get up and still make it in the humbug. So the river's only about three miles away from Cape Blanco State Park. The river's a big deal, especially after this little bit of rain. So if I can't get across it, then the first thing in the morning, I'll try it again when it's a little lower and the tide, low tide's a little later. Well, our journey continues south. Amazing what a good night's sleep does for you when you are just dog tired in the last couple of days. So today when I get to Cape Blanco, we'll mark mile 300. Nice little campground. Megan does a good job there. Very helpful and uh, enjoyed my stay. We'll go down here a ways and get a little away from the ocean and eventually come back to it next on the cliff. It's a pretty enchanted place. All right. Either way, I'll get you to Black Lock Point, but that way it's not quite as scenic, but it does make a nice bike trail. We'll go through here and get on the cliff side. But nice view out here to the right. Just don't want to get too close. Looking out there at Black Lock Point, at least the north side of it. Barely make out Cape Arago way up there. We're going to follow this little trail and see where it goes. Maybe it connects on the very first bright view of Cape Lyco down there. You can see the lighthouse today. driftwood over that little grassy hump onto the beach and I think that will be all right but that could be a little iffy. Well, welcome to today's obstacle course. sand. Well, the good news, we didn't fall, and this sand, which is usually pretty soft, is at least right now kind of hard because it's wet. The ocean just looks a little more angry today than usual, so I don't know. We just have to figure this out. See this guy? He's just spacing out. See he is. Hi there. What are you doing, man? I figured you'd get on your haunch and leave. charm. I have never been through anything like that. Man, the storm surge out here is supposed to get worse by about two o'clock tonight. I talked to a guy that said the river level is about two feet higher than it was yesterday with 
all the rain they've been having. So I got down at about six o'clock with trekking poles and plowed through and got through the first time. And uh, turned around and went back to the other side, got hit by some some bit of a storm surge wave about a foot high, kind of knocked me a little bit. And then when the next one came in a foot higher, that knocked me off and dumped me in. So I got out all soaked and I figured, okay, I'll, I'll watch the waves this time. Put on my pack and kept my belts unbuckled. And luckily, did not get hit by any waves. But the water was just over knees, flowing faster than I've been in water flowing since I was 20. And did make it across in one piece, safe and sound, and dry. So now I gotta get up to Cape Blanco State Park and warm up and eat. Oh, calm down a little bit now that that's done. But man, you don't want to do that every day. Set you back a little bit. Thank you, Lord. Well, at least the lighthouse will lead me home tonight. It's light up there. Ooh, man. Way to get your adrenaline pumping. Soup will be very good tonight. Actually, anything warm will be good tonight. Well, happy foggy morning on day 27. We're just leaving Cape Blanco State Park. It's supposed to be no rain today, but doesn't mean it's not gonna drizzle. Drizzle doesn't count on the south coast as rain. It counts as a cloudy day. So <clears throat> we're hitting the beach here at low tide at about a 45 minute walk down to the Elk River. God willing, we'll be a little bit less deep and up to Paradise Point, and then into Port Orford, and then we'll go from there. Well, that's a whole lot more beach than I walked in on yesterday, about six times more. Low tide is right now, so I need to hump it down to Sixes River and get there in about 45 minutes or less. Nice hard pack sand this morning. I see blue, yay. Day's perking up. Well, we have reached the Elk River. It seems to be flowing fairly well. Find a good place to cross. Probably down there. All right, well, down at the mouth, it's uh, about a foot deep, but then you got all this ocean water coming in. I'm gonna cross up here where it's a little bit deeper but not for very long and it's not flowing quite as fast right at this little corner right here so that seems to be okay it's about thigh deep but it's not flowing as fast as it is down below well, sometimes it pays to go through a little deeper water if it's not running as quickly and the bottom was Kind of mushy but you could see it and the most i think i went down was about two feet so anyway we're through that go down the beach a little bit get off the beach and head into town it's starting to be a nice day though sun's coming out and we're through the stressful part of the day yeah we'll just say goodbye to cape blanco down there in the mist Port Orford heads up here. We'll go around those, go through town, and then get on the beach, go through Harper Creek, and head over to Humboldt Mountain this afternoon. Alright, we have now reached the pavement off the soft sand beach. This is at least a little easier on the thighs and the calves. We're down here by Garrison Lake. Well, decided to stop in town and put a couple of quarters in the dryer go to Dollar Tree and a little food for tonight and tomorrow. And then you go to the end of town and uh, get the diner for lunch. So 
We'll be here a little bit, but <coughs> having dry stuff is nice. All right, we finally made it around Port Orford Heads to Battle Rock, sign of an 18. Fight. This might be a little wetter walk than usual because the tide is high in about an hour, so we're not there yet. We'll go down here and find the trail off the beach. It well, only we got a little wet, so that's not too bad. We'll go down here and check out the Pelican Festival. They are by my presence. Hmm. We are quickly running out of beach. Unfortunately, I see a sign, so that must be a trail up there. Gets us up to the road. Yay. All right, just like that, we're straight up off the beach. We gotta go about, about a mile and a half south before we get on the next little part, which is the old Highway 101 which we'll get some nice views before dropping down into the park before dinner. Yay. All right, we've hit the fork in the road. That way goes to somebody's property and this way goes to where we're going behind the brown gate here. All right, we're about to the top of the hill here, which is going to lead us down to the campground. This is a nice view of Humbug Mountain. Humbug from this side. Tomorrow we'll go around it and go down to the wonderful metropolis of Ophir, where Euchre Creek enters the ocean and continue our voyage to Go Beach. All right, this is our home for the night with a new fire ring and place to lock my bike and a dry spot for my tent. Right. Good morning, day 28. Our blue skies have returned. That's good. I am at the uh, Humbug Mountain Trailhead, actually waiting to uh, pick up a bus so I can skirt the next 11 narrow miles, one of the gaps in the trail. And I'm not going to walk on the road because lots of traffic out today. Well, I just got dropped off here after Humbug at the prehistoric gardens, so this is not really an illusion. Those really are dinosaurs behind me, of course. I'm close to Arizona Beach and Sisters Rock, so I'm going to drop pack here and go for a little walk and see what uh, that's about before I continue on down to uh, Ophir and cross Euchre Creek, which you got to go over on the bridge and then continue south towards Gold Beach. Well, Arizona Beach here, you look out towards Humbug and Port Orford Heads way up there. Clear day. And low, low tide coming up in a couple hours. Probably get the Sisters Rocks that way. Looks like we found our path again here at Sisters Rock down to the beach. Arizona Beach, which is kind of hidden behind a little rock jetty up there. Maybe on a minus two tide you could walk all the way down here, but not today. Anyway, beautiful little beach, part of the world. Humbug Mountain with its clear cut at the top. But we'll go down here and see the pebbly beach down here. 
This is a little bit bigger up close. I came part way up the big sister's rock and lo and behold it's got a hole in it going down to the ocean. place has everything you need to camp here. I don't know about that water source, but the trail off the beach I think is over here. Well, we're now on the Sika Road. Highway 101 is over there. Cute little town. <laughs> there's, there's no people, no cars driving anywhere. I'm on the road for 10 minutes, nothing's past me. Anyway places. All right, we've turned left. Highway's up there. Trail markers here. Should take us over to the monument. All right, we're come rolling into Otter Point Stick State Recreation Site. All right, this must be the trail to the beach. Seems a little odd, but let's go this way and see where it goes. Well, I'm guessing that that's Bailey Beach. Can't quite see the jetty yet, but it's around that corner there. Beautiful day though. Nice view here. Ocean's still pretty calm. Even a little steep and narrow as trails to the beach goes, this is probably one of the best I've been on the entire coast. Who would have thunk it getting down to Bailey Beach? Looking north, that furthest hump down there, that is Humbug Mountain. I've always wondered what this point way down here was. You can see, and now I know that's Cape Sebastian. Just right by the airport. The airport's right next to the south jetty. So that's not surprising. We're at the north jetty, though. And I need to find a way out of here. Take this road up to where the jetty ends. Probably a Coast Guard building up here somewhere. Nice Art Deco design. Arch is still a little wire through to keep people from falling through. And now we can see the mouth of the Rogue River. Quite spectacular today. All right, so we're about done with this. And welcome to Gold Beach. Yay. Hardly believe it's just about been a month. But we only had a few days to go. We're just leaving uh, Indian Creek. Really liked it here. Nice people, nice place, good food. Lots of places to plug in your electronics. Nice bathroom. 
Place the campus quiet. I'm gonna head down to the beach here at the visitor center. Off in the distance we see Cape Sebastian and in the foreground there Turtle Rock. And I think we can get on the beach this way. I see a beach access. And the tide is low in about 10 minutes. So good timing down here and get ready to go and we'll go visit Turtle Rock and figure out how to find the trail up Cape Sebastian. Well, what looked a little threatening over there kind of dried up right there. That's the end of Hunter Creek here at Turtle Rock. Kind of looks like a snapping turtle down the beach. All right, just met up with somebody but kind of told me the way but I think we're on the right path here. Looks like a Oh, here's a bed or something, but I see it on my trail out, so I think we're on a path. Let's see where this goes. It's going to go up here pretty quick, pretty steeply, but that's all right. We'll get there. Have a nice bridge up here. Yeah, this is not a bad trail once you get up the first 150, 200 feet vertical. Right. Breathing pretty heavy. 670 feet up. That was the 333 trail. Okay. So we're gonna head this way. We're gonna take a little break first. Well, for as tall and as bad as this trail was purported to be, it's actually been trimmed and recently and in pretty good shape. There's a few really steep spots, but by and large, it's all like this. I'm gonna go up here and meet up with another trail and keep looking at the map and make sure we take the right forks today. But this isn't too bad. Well, that was a good bit of effort. That was kind of like coming up Tillamook Head, but without mud. And like going up Hasita Head without uh, the stairs. And this was a little narrow little trail, but it was in good shape. It's just, uh, it's very steep. Well, that's the tip of Cape Sebastian. Fortunately, we can't see around the other side. We can just see down this hill and this beach that we're going to be on in a little bit in the beautiful uh, blue-green Pacific. Okay, the view south from Cape Sebastian. See humbug kind of sticking out there and Port Orford Heads may be on that. The afternoon fog is starting to roll in, so it'll be foggy on the beach when we get down there. Go down this hill. A little thick brush on the down trail here. About eight feet tall or taller. Nicely maintained though. Just noting the trail on the south side of Cape Sebastian. It's much drier. It's got many more these black huckleberries, and sword ferns. No, no deer ferns over here. A lot more pines. Now we're making our way back to Dune to Myers Beach. And we'll get up on Highway 101. And I think before we look for a place to stealth camp, I'm going to make one phone call. See if we can't get a ride into Brookings tonight. If we can't, then we'll stealth camp. If we can, we'll go to Harris Beach, camp for the night, call and get a ride tomorrow. Back to where we got picked up. It should probably be Pistol River view site or that's that's not too far from here and I'll finish up tomorrow at Harris Beach again. Well, I'm really hoping there's a beach down there we can walk on it is high tide and it has turned to fog on the south side of Cape Sebastian and the rope handle down to the beach is a nice touch this would be a little tricky if it was muddy I would think not too bad to dig, except for maybe the last 15 feet down there. Just 
to actually hang on to the rope. Well, not much beach to work with, but not much trail to work with either. So at least we're on the bottom now. We'll get up to 101 and make some decisions. Just about the time I was planning for a calm day and looking at things, I was looking at my uh, phone for a second. The next thing you know, I'm on the ground, head first. It's, uh, large rock here, never saw it. Skinned up both knees, and now we gotta get patched up, so I'm okay. Startled me more than anything, but how can you spell idiot? <laughs> I guess that's why you're not supposed to text when you drive. I won't text when I walk. Uh, we're getting down here. I can see the road again. Yay. I can get to it without killing myself. Well, I got over the bridge of the Pistol River and pulled in and realized I didn't have any reception, so did a little thinking, called for some help from my sister, who sent me the phone numbers of some folks in Brookings, called them, and taxi is on the way, so I'm going to go with kind of original plan A, go down to Harris Beach. State Park tonight and hopefully get a ride back to here close to here tomorrow if I feel okay I mean I got some pretty swollen knees <laughs> kind of embarrassed about that but anyway so we'll get in tonight this will be better and to top it all off I mean I was ready to go down to like Lola Lake and camp you know and then here comes Mr. Ranger and his assistant with his little patrol vehicle pulled in so it's just me and them He's kind of eyeing me like, you know, you're not supposed to camp here, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. So that was part of my uh, motivation for getting out of here and getting up the road. We'll get through this day and then get ready for uh, uh, day 30 tomorrow. Anyway, have a good night. Rest. Well, good morning, day 30. More than a month now, it seems like, been at this. But we're getting ready to go here. I'm going to walk out the uh, hiker trail out to Highway 101. So I'm going to find it on my way back in. And uh, call in to get uh, a taxi so we can go down to Arch Rock and start our journey there at the Sam Boardman Corridor. Apparently this 12-mile stretch of... Uh, trail was kind of the inspiration for uh, the Oregon Coast Trail. Had a good night last night. A little tough getting up this morning. Getting on the knees to curl out of the tent kind of was a little painful, but once I was up, I was good. I'm not really that stiff, so I think we'll be all right today. Packing vitamin I in case we need it. We'll come up to uh, Start the day here at Arch Rock picnic area. Pretty steep drop off, but a very pretty little bridge. Can't quite get down there yet. We'll get there. I guess when we miss Arch Rock, we're getting over here to Spruce Point. Next, actually to Spruce Island off of Deer Point. Lots of names today, so try and get most of that right. I think we're heading down steeply to Deer Point to view Spruce Island. All these trails seem to have one thing in common, they all go straight down and then straight back up. 
I think this is Secret Beach. Where the trail goes on the other side. Oh, well, this is pretty. Nice little ecosystem up on top of each of these rocks. Very cool. We're headed over to Natural Bridges next. We gotta get up and over this little hump first. And then down to China Beach. They could put these probably about every hundred yards. Natural bridges, viewpoint, very pretty. Well, this only gets better. We're gonna hunker along the road for a while so we can find the access trail down to China Beach, which we ought to be able to get at because it's not high tide. shelter. I think that little next pile of sticks halfway up the hill there is the way off the beach. Going over there and then up that little slide. Back to the road as the description says steep. All right looks like a trail to me at least it's better than the one coming down from Cape Sebastian yesterday so probably go straight up that's okay it's better than straight down I'm having difficulty with straight down today so straight up's okay All right, we have reached the Thomas Creek Bridge we're not gonna go bungee jumping today although you probably could if it were legal Good time. Ready? Oh my. That would definitely leave a mark. I think we're at Indian Sands. Yep. Okay. And we'll find our way out over here. Kind of nice to be on a nice wide path for a change instead of hunkering on the edge of a cliff. I see this goes downhill rapidly. It's like everything else from the road down to the beach. So we'll just have to go down rapidly with it. Well, I must say the trail in through Indian Sands is a lot more pleasant than anything I've been on today. So maybe the beach, this is nice, quiet, still overcast. Pleasant 60 degrees. Doesn't feel like as humid as it was. We'll get up here to Whale's Head. See more of these guys out the last two days. It just must have some weekend events somewhere. So at least two dozen of them yesterday. Anyway, he looks like he's on a mission. Whale's Head viewpoint. Who knows? It seemed better than whales. I guess you can see it. We come out of the forest here to House Rock. It seems to have a viewpoint up here. It's hard to believe that chunk way down there is Cape Sebastian. And we come all this way. China Beach came up the hill here. We're just about on the top of Cape Morello and House Rock. Samuel Boardman Monument. First and foremost, a conservationist, Sam Boardman's singular vision of the natural world became his greatest gift to the people of Oregon. As the first superintendent of state parks, 1929 and 1950, he pursued land purchases and donations with a zeal and determination not soon forgotten. 
almost single-handedly Boardman transformed a tiny series of roadside parks into a magnificent state park system, preserving some of the Oregon's most spectacular landscapes for all of us and for future. The rugged 12-mile coastal preserve was named in honor of Sam Boardman on the eve of his retirement in 1950. Seems kind of small as rocks go. House rock. But maybe that's just the tip. All right, we're out of the short grass and just about up to the Cape Ferrello parking lot where my knees have finally said no moss. Not going down to uh, Lone Ranch Beach, but uh, still nice out, no wind. That's kind of a blessing today. Well, I'm gonna go take care of this uh, 430 bench over here because it's 434 and I'm late. Have a little sit down for a little bit, get a little water and get ready to go in the last two and a half miles into Harris Beach. Well, I'm having a little trouble getting off the 430 bench here. So, I was really tired. Um, but I got a little ways to go to get into uh, camp and then we'll see if I want to go into town tonight and have some dinner or just go to sleep. <laughs> I don't know. This is a uh, very interesting collection of trails along here, the Sam Boardman Corridor, and it is uh, very steep in spots. And in the winter, oh God, I would bring crampons. I mean, it would be bad. Um, but it's an interesting collection of trails that are just kind of odd that they're all, all right next to each other here but the uh the natural bridges was very pretty i'd recommend maybe go see that because you can park and walk out to the overlook and it's one of the prettiest things i've ever seen Steep grade? No. I've been on a steep grade. I doubt if it's that steep. But we'll follow it. Hopefully it'll end at the park. Looks like that. We're back at the gate. The park. Get back. Get well, we need to negotiate our way from Harris Beach State Park to downtown Brookings. Across the Chetco River, get into Harbor, Oregon, and get on Ocean View Drive and keep walking till we're in California this afternoon sometime. And come back into town and relax. Well, we're headed out of town, just about ready to go over the Chetco River here. 58, so we'll get down into harbor and get off this noisy street, I hope. Kind of a no-frills bridge here, but as long as it gets us to the other side, that's what's important. We had a quiet neighborhood for a little while. I wanted to say thanks to all who helped get this done up until now. Appreciate all your help and advice and time and effort picking me up or bailing me out when I needed it. Much appreciated. Well, I think we're going to come in right around 370 or 371 miles and, and all of that without a blister. Not a bad time. Yay. Let's see what's going on down here at McVeigh Rock State Recreation Site. Scrub J. Hey. Hmm. Well, let's go down to the beach and have a look. Well, it starts with a fine job today. Let's see, We've got a lot of red algae down here. Let's see how far we can get in this loose pack. We haven't seen a beach like this before. <laughs> 
kind of crap sand here. Oh well, it's not going to go forever. So this jutting out piece up here is, I guess, with bay rock. Looks like we'll be able to get around it. Even though the sand here is <laughs> horrible. Just deep and big pebbles, rocks in the shoes, and all the things you hate about sand. And the tide's coming in. But don't have high tide till six o'clock. So we should be all right. Down here, we don't have so much bull kelp as this coralline algae and this red seaweed here. It has a distinct smell. Not unpleasant, just the stink. We're gonna have to go up and over if we can, otherwise we're gonna have to backtrack and go around. Get a little look here. See what the other side does. Not very deep, just go around in front. Just as soon go through here if I could. I think we can maybe do it. Be careful. I'm hoping we don't have too many more of these. Each one gets a little harder. I don't really want to go knock on the neighbor's door. That way is a no go. We've got to try this way. This might work. Maybe. We don't hit another wall of rock somewhere. Yay. Oh man, coming up and over all of that. I am lucky the only thing I got out of it is wet feet. A little bit. Another uh, 20 minutes, I wouldn't have been able to get through there. Now, we'll just walk on the beach a little while until we get there. I'm not sure what that building is out there, but that might be our deck. Man, what a way to end. Almost didn't make it. I must have passed the test. Now I got soft or harder sand to walk on instead of pea gravel. Pea gravel's a little tough. Builds character. You can see Chrissy Field up here and a yellow sign, which means there's got to be a river crossing up here somewhere. Up with that little building up there with the windows. That's the observation deck for the airport. They're no big. We'll get done today one way or the other. All right, let's get off the beach so we can go over the bridge so we can get on the beach and get this done. It's like a nice swimming river. While I'm on Highway 101, instead of turning into Christie Field right here, I think I'm going to go up and find the Welcome to California sign. Say hi. Anyway, we'll see what's going on here at the visitor center. Well, I'm not a visitor. I know this place pretty intimately now.